Today we're reacting to the 12 most shocking discoveries ever made on the water. Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. I'm <laughs> sort of paused because, wow, the 12 most shocking 12 ever ever in the entire ever. world of underwater world. Okay. Ever. Uh, okay. Wow. So these are probably not going to be the 12 most on the water shocking discoveries. I'm expecting big, um, big things. Yeah, this is another one of those videos. It was requested by somebody, uh, one of those, one of our subscribers, um, that basically is made by channels that have zero divers in, apparently. And they just, you know, find some content online and they say, just throw a list out there and say that this is the most shocking thing ever. Um I mean, maybe if they find, like, aliens, oh, I would be shocked. That's not the name. Because I know they exist, so that would be cool. But I don't know. I haven't seen it. So if we find aliens, I'm going to be impressed. The people that had subscribed just hit unsubscribe right now after that comment. But <laughs> let's uh, let's go and check it out because um, I'm interested on in hear your thoughts about these most shocking discoveries ever. So let's get started. They say the ocean is the space on Earth, in terms of how much we've discovered. We've only discovered around 20% of it, and from what we already know, there are way too many crazy things in there. Can you imagine what it's like in the areas that are still being discovered? From a terrifying shark statue to underwater trains, to the lost city of Atlantis. Here are 12 shocking ocean discoveries divers have ever made. Wow. I, I paused it just because a terrifying shark statue? <laughs> Well, let's see. Would that be terrifying to find a stark shark statue? Right. Yes. So. Number 12, Here we go. shark oh, statue at Lake Nuchatel. It's normal to see a shark in shark infested waters, but usually you'll swim by Look sharks that. that are just Beauty. going about their fishy day and doing their thing. Oh. But that's not quite what happens at Lake Nuchatel, Switzerland. Swimming there can turn dangerous very quickly if you're not really into jump scares, because you'll be met with a shocking shark out of nowhere with its mouth wide open, ready to devour you. Okay, that's Well, not kinda. Shark. It's not actually a real shark, I'm but sorry. a statue. But the thing is, there isn't really supposed to be a statue there. So no one knows who made it, how it got there, and why it's there. I mean, so what? I, that <laughs> one's nothing. Somebody threw a shark statue there. Yeah, they thought it would be funny, and they just put a shark statue. Probably they got from a theme park or... Yeah. To promote a movie or whatever, and they put it in the lake. I mean, it's 12 most deal. shocking. I picture something that's like really old, really rare, not right. like a mermaid. I mean, that was made from plastics. Plastics wasn't around thousands of years ago. Yeah. Okay, Underwater that, that, that centaur. One's, that one's. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, but yeah, there's statues one. everywhere. Um, I'd like to see it. It'd be fun. But I remember. It's not shocking. I remember, and I'll put the video on, on this video just to see. The, somebody discover a statue of Jason Voorhees. Um, from, you know, the killer from the movie, from the <laughs> movies, uh, in Lake Pleasant in Arizona. And so the visibility is not great. So you're just diving, diving all of a sudden, pff, here's Jason, like a life size <laughs> Jason at the bottom of, of the lake. That one would be more interesting, but a statue of a shark that is humongous. It actually becomes a feature, I think. I of mean, this place. it's not that I wouldn't want to see it, but it's not the 12 most shocking discoveries. Yeah. Surprise it's just that he made those. Somebody Maybe they've only discovered 12 things ever. So I mean, they had to put this one somebody in. Somebody just threw end. it in the bottom. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> the only thing we can say for sure is that it's not something you want to see on a peaceful dive through the ocean. No, no it uh, is. I do. Number want to see 11, it. SS Thistlegorm. The SS Thistlegorm began her journey in 1940. She was an armed freighter transporting arms and ammunition, and was supposed to make its journey from Glasgow to Alexandria, Egypt, on the 2nd of June, 1941. On board was some heavy-duty cargo, like cool. a couple of Bedford trucks, several Universal Carrier armored vehicles, yes. a few Norton 16H and BSA motorcycles, some Bren guns, lots of cases of ammunition, and a lot of .303 rifles. Point. There is also radio equipment, Love a whole bunch that. of Wellington boots, a fleet of aircraft parts, and even railway wagons, and two LMS Stanier Class 8F steam locomotives. Nobody? So basically, a whole military worth of stuff and the ship never made it to its destination. It was hit by mines and ended up sinking near the Suez Canal. And with everything else going on, it ended up being lost and forgotten. But the local fishermen didn't forget. 
In the 1950s, Jacques Cousteau, an experienced diver, oh. went into oh. the area and deep. What? Wait, so what was it? What did who? Maybe, maybe that was Jack's cousin, Jackie. Jackie? <laughs> What's he? Jackie Cousteau. What Does this guy not know who Jacques Cousteau is? Wow. I mean, I one mean, thing it, is you're it, not a diver. Wrong. But... It's maybe, maybe it's no. just like Mr. B. Allen versus Mr. Bell. No, 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 no. no. no is we're his not name wrong. Jackie? No, no, no. This guy's an idiot. Uh, I, By the my, way, the wreck is amazing. I mean, who, you would not want to dive oh, that wreck. That's awesome. an amazing wreck. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised they didn't find any bodies, though. Like, if if there were survivors, wouldn't you know that he sank there? Looks but like man, a Chuck Lagoon wreck type of wreck. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. part's absolutely God. insane. Okay. Hate this guy. I don't hate uh, him, but that's not. No, I, I do. <laughs> All right, here we go. Down at the surface of the ocean, found the SS Thistlegorn rapidly rusting, but everything exactly where it was. He was even able to bring back a motorcycle, the captain's safe, and the ship's bell. That's really All cool. intact, which is a pretty crazy sight to see. Number 10. The Sea of Galilee Structure. Usually, the ocean and seabeds are very smooth, and that's what researchers were expecting when they were studying the seabed of the Sea of Galilee in oh, Israel using I've sonar technology in 2003. I've been, I've been here. They found something else. Oh, yeah. A huge structure made entirely out of rocks. Sounds normal, but it's a 230 foot wide, 32 feet high structure. Hmm. Upon investigation, okay. it was found that it could be anywhere between 2,000 to 12,000 years old and weighs an unbelievable 60,000 tons. Okay. Even though researchers have been studying this structure for around yeah. a decade now, cool. there's Walker still way the too many unanswered questions. What is this structure? A monument? A burial site? And how did it even get underwater? But it seems like it's going to take a lot more research and some good old-fashioned guesswork to figure this one out. That's cool. I would think okay, that. Number so nine, what? the locomotive graveyard. I mean, there's well, a bunch I mean, of different ways that that stuff could have gotten. I mean, if it's 10,000 years ago, that could have been dry land. And well, they yeah, just built but, it. Yeah, but it's still a cool discovery. I mean, that's pretty amazing to find that giant structure underwater but, and say, wow. What, what is this structure, though? They, he never from, showed a picture. Who of it. made it? What what was good, what was it used for? I mean, I, I'm I'm okay. I think that one's pretty right, cool. Fine. I like that one. Yard. In 1985, scuba diver Paul Hepler was going about his day, mapping the ocean floor near New Jersey using a magnometer, when he suddenly got a signal that signaled disruption. When he went closer to figure out what it was, he found two metal structures. He went even closer and saw that it was two very small trains in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Okay. Upon further investigation, they found that they were class 222T trains, which were very rare and only used in train yards for the short time they were used. But nothing explains how they went from a train yard to the bottom of the ocean and oh. stayed there for at least 100 years. Fell off a boat. If yeah. two of these trains went missing, there would be some record of them, right? Not 100 well, years. Well, these trains ago. are just considered lost at sea, and the story is lost with them. Okay. Number eight, cool. the Baltic Sea Anomaly. The Baltic Sea. In June of 2011, the Swedish diving company went on an underwater expedition of the Gulf of Bothnia. Wow. They went so there it's... looking for the treasure almost 300 feet under the surface, but found something unexplainable. Wait, wait. Pretty deep. I told you. Look at. Okay. First of all, what the... ship does that look like in what movie? No, this doesn't Star look like Star Wars. No. You know that ship? That oh, What's it called God. again? No, and no, no, that no. Uh, I want. All right, we're gonna play the rest of this, but I we may. This is not a picture. I, this is a, some drawing or something. It, this doesn't even make sense. I knew it. Aliens. Oh, a literal God. mystery object. It's a circular structure with stairways, ramps, and other features that nature couldn't just carve on its own. No. It's circular with 200 feet all in right, diameter, which makes it downright humongous. I must. But see the this. thing about it that's craziest is that no one knows what it is. Some researchers think it's a sunken UFO. I agree. But no one has been able to figure out its true origins. Th those researchers are crazy. The Baltic crazy. Sea Anomaly. Those they researchers are shunned from the industry. An from alien structure? No. That is worthy of the 12 most shocking things, which I said at the beginning, not even knowing. So we've got one that's for sure should be in this category. So this we have aliens. This is probably a giant like uh, sea sponge. Who makes and this that idiots thing? are like, oh, look, it's Star Wars. No. Sea sponge. Look yeah. at it. This it's is massive. not the real picture. 
All right, so one, we, we did get, we did find aliens. Oh, That's worthy of this video, cool. Number seven, the ghost fleet of Truck Lagoon. Love Chuck. Jacques Cousteau is a uh, naval explorer who wanted to explore everything. He was particularly fascinated by the shipwrecks of the time of the Second World War. And that fascination led him to the waters of Micronesia in 1969, so where he awesome. found something shocking. Deep in the waters were Japanese ships from the war that had sunk, an entire fleet of ships. One of them was sunk with its cargo hold intact, which held the bodies of 400 soldiers. Tons of them. The bodies were still there, lost and forgotten. He was able to pinpoint the location and send the information to the Japanese Navy, and they were able to extract the bodies from the area. But it's still one of the craziest wreckage sites to dive to. All right, you've been there. It's awesome, man. This guy is making it sound like nobody knew this stuff was there. Oh, no, no, they they knew they knew it was there. Of course, we attacked because them. We, we sunk eighty ships there. Yeah, this was just, wasn't was like a retaliation for Pearl Harbor. Yeah, this wasn't like US. a like a secret mission, and yeah. all of a sudden the ships sank under yeah. weird circumstances. It was a lot of we their bomb them. It was a lot of their cargo ships and transport ships that they were hiding there, and that was used for refueling their the Japanese Pacific Fleet. We annihilated it as a retaliation for Pearl Harbor, and. They absolutely knew it was there. But what they didn't know is where exactly they were underwater because, you know. But can you see some diving. of these ships from like the surface? Uh, no. no. No, not wow. really. Maybe some. I, I don't want, I don't know for sure. I don't I I don't believe so. But Interesting. Jacques Cousteau, not not Jackie. Yeah, cousin. I don't know who his that cousin is. Cousin Jackie's. Yeah. <laughs> um you know. Somebody had to go underwater and look for this stuff. We knew it was there. So the fact that they're saying this was this giant discovery. Wow, there were ships there. No, we always knew there were ships there. Right. But he did find exactly where they are underwater. Divers say that when they go there, they can feel the eerie presence of lots of people there. You can. As it's if the weird. soldiers who died oh, there haunt it. the waters to this that. day. I knew. I knew. Look at this. So respectful. They're painting skulls. Like a, They're skull. They still have some of the skulls. And but, but what is that? It's like you feel the presence of soldiers in the water. Like, what I is did. It talking? I remember when I was no. diving through it, I felt like, wow. Because no. you see like you their did. sake bottles and you're yeah, like, man, they were in their dishes. And I'm like, God, they just all sunk right here while they were cooking and drinking sake. And okay. they're still even leaking oil from 75, almost 80 years ago, leaking oil still coming out of these. I mean, you do kind of feel that presence. So, okay, that part, yeah, I kind of agree with that one. All right. Number six, underwater Stonehenge. Really? We all know the mystery behind Stonehenge, a structure about 9,000 years old that no one can explain. Total ripoff. By but the what way. if that structure right. was underwater? Well, that's exactly what Mark Hawley and Brian Abbott, who are professors of underwater archaeology at the University of Michigan, found. Wait, I have to stop the video to mention Stonehenge. It's a total ripoff. Like, don't no, go. No, it is. It's a I, tourist trap. But it's we don't know it. how it got there. What is it aligning, like, astrological, you know, pointing to the stars in a certain way? It's kind of cool to see. It doesn't matter how it got there. Just don't go there and pay all the money to see it. You can see it from the road for free. Or just look at Google Pictures. It's the same. <laughs> it's totally worthless to waste several hours in England. Do a pop tour. I did a pop tour. It was way better than going to Stonehenge. Anyway, that's your cultural <laughs> interruption of that's the pretty day. pretty sophisticated. Out in Lake Michigan in 2007. The structure is set up the same way as the land Stonehenge. But while studying the rocks, they found a carving of a mastodon in it. An animal that went extinct over 10,000 years ago. So this structure had to be older than that. People but what still really is it? Today. And what is it even doing deep inside the waters? No one really knows. Do you know that I'm actually finding this video to be pretty shocking as they described? <laughs> There's only one or two of them, but these are all amazing. What in the world is that thing with a carving of some thing that was extinct millions of years there's ago. a bunch of lines also on the rock he doesn't look like it looks it's like a... the friggin elephant that went extinct oh millions of years God. ago okay i yeah. this one if you look at it from a different angle it probably looks like a rooster i want to dive like, oh, these yeah. things yeah i want to dive it too number but... five the yonagadi monuments what the pyramids of egypt are one of the biggest it. mysteries of the world we don't know how they were built That's but at true. least we know that people built them and part of the reason why but there is a pyramid at another location we have zero information about. The ones at the Yonagani complex near Japan's Ryukyu Island. 
The site was found by a local diver in 1987. It's a giant really? 165 cool. foot by 65 foot structure with straight edges and steps, what? entryways and lots of walkways what? that are just too straight to be natural. But the entire structure is attached to a massive rock below, so it wasn't built on it. It's believed to be at least 10,000 years old, if not older. But even shallow. after two decades of research, no one knows what it is and who built it. The locals believe it's a natural structure, but no one can really answer that question with I complete agree. certainty, making it one of the biggest mysteries of the ocean. I agree with the locals. It's Number a natural four, structure. The Bimini Road. I mean, just because it's flat or whatever doesn't mean it's not natural. I mean, you can see the Tapuis in Venezuela, where I'm from. There are those mountains that are like flat on top. Like if you've seen pictures of Angel Falls, you see it. It just comes out straight from the ground and then it's perfectly flat on top. And the species that you find at the top of the Tepui are don't even live at the bottom of them. It's like, like a time machine. And that's natural. I think this is natural too. It's not aliens. Don't look at the camera like that. Don't. Stop. On the 2nd of September, 1968, divers Joseph Manson Valentine Jacques Mayo and Robert Angove were diving in the Check. waters off of the North Bimini Island in the Bahamas. There, around... The North what islands? It's in Bimini, right? In the Bimini, Bahamas. Bimini, but what did he call it also? I have no idea. You want to rewind a little bit? Listen so, to what he called it. Uh, right, let's see. Ten I don't seconds want to be right. too critical, but just listen. 1968, divers Joseph Manson Valentine, Jacques Mayo and Robert Angove were diving in the waters off of the North Bimini Island in the Bahamas. Bimini there, Island? around 18 feet below the surface of the Bimini. water, lies what they called the Bimini Road. It's a 0.8 kilometer road or pavement that's made entirely out of limestone rock. But it's not a regular old rock formation. These rocks look to have been placed together to make a path. Most of the rocks are at a 90 degree angle, which we don't really see in nature. And a lot of them have even been propped on top of one another to make the entire plane leveled. Could this be the road to Atlantis? Yes. We may never know. Why are you saying yes? Well, it Number could be. three. That's actually no. It could not be. I mean, that was probably a city, and we know the waters have receded and rose, receded and rose. I mean, yeah, it was probably you flooded, know flooded, a flooded city. I don't know if it was to Atlantis, but it, I mean, it was somebody probably made like that. a boat ramp, and now the water level came a little up, and that's it. It's really old. Okay. Let's go watch the Orta Caves. Caves. In the 1960s, a group of divers found the entrance to what looked like a mystical underwater site, later named the Orta Caves. These caves are in the village of Orta, Russia, west of the Ural Mountains. Cold. Unlike regular caves, these ones are made entirely out of gypsum, which gives the entire cave a crystallized look. The caves weren't even explored until 1994, and ever since, it's been a very popular diving site in Russia. The five kilometer cave is a wonder to dive in. It's pretty beautiful on its own, is well lit for most of the entrance, and even has underwater lakes inside it, making it one of the most unique sites anyone can visit throughout the world. I mean, that's a pretty cool discovery. If you discovered that cave, that's yeah. a pretty cool discovery. But shocking? I mean, I'm going to say pretty cool yeah. rather than shocking. Looks right. fun on DPV. That case. I mean, I don't know what I would need to wear to make more than two like a 15 dry suits. minute. Yeah, two dry suits and <laughs> two heaters. Number two, gold. Yes. On February of 2015, a group of divers was diving in the waters off the ancient port city of Caesarea in Israel. Mm. They were just diving to see the waters up close, but they found what they weren't even looking for, gold. There were several gold coins on the surface. They would have been totally hidden if it weren't for a massive storm that had stuck the region a few days prior. That probably wiped the debris off them. In total, they recovered wow. 13 pounds of coins. Wow. Upon investigation, they found that they were old Islamic era coins. 2,000 of the coins were at least 1,000 years old. That's Some of them awesome. even had bite marks on them, showing that whoever had them had bitten them to do the old-fashioned authenticity check. So... 13 pounds of gold, it's worth a fortune. Oh, millions, Just right? the gold. I mean, oh, man. I don't know how much. How much per ounce is gold and then right. extrapolate that. It's a but lot. But the fact that he's made in 2,000 ancient gold coins. <laughs> I'm going to Google this. Makes them invaluable. I mean. Unbelievable. What now, is now, here's the question. And this is a hypothetical question asking for a friend type of thing. Okay. Let's say we're out in Israel or Egypt or Australia. It doesn't matter whatever we are, and we find gold coins, 
What do yes. you do? And then I'm going to ask you a, diff- a different question. But what would you do? Would you like uh, pretend you didn't see them? Would you pick him up, bring him to the boat and be like, look what I found? What, what do you do? <laughs> I would be honest and I would go to the boat captain and operator and say, look, I found these gold coins. I don't know what the rules are. I don't know if I have to turn them in or not, but there's a ton of them down there. And here's a few of them. What do we do? I would seek the the I help would, of the yes. person. Okay. Definitely. That's what I know. I know me for sure. I would do, I would come up and be like, I just found tons of gold coins. Like, are, do I have to turn them into the Israeli government or do I get to keep these or what are the rules? Okay. But again, let's don't don't worry about the country itself. Just pretend it's anywhere, right? Okay, so that so that's one thing. But let's say that you say I found these gold coins. Let's say you find four, not thirteen pounds worth of it. Let's say you found four gold coins. And you decide I'm not you know what? I'm gonna stash them in my like my wetsuit sleeve. It's only four gold coins and I'm gonna take them with me. What do you do then? How do you you can't exit the airport with gold coins like that, right? They'll bust you. Like especially I just, in countries I just wouldn't where... do that. I mean, I would want people to know that it was there. And I, if I get to keep them, I want to be able to keep them. For real? For real and legally and be able to yeah. post it all over Facebook and dive talk. I wouldn't feel good about, look, I've got these four gold coins and I can't tell Snatched anybody them. about it. It's like sneaky. I just, it wouldn't feel good to me to do that. I would feel right. amazed that I found them and I want to share it with everybody. So I think, that's what I would do. I, mean, I think I, for me... I don't know if I want to say what I would do, but I think in most countries, in most countries, I would do exactly what you're talking about. But like if I was in Venezuela and I found gold coins, there's no chance I'm going to notify the government because well, I know they're going to steal them. Well, Venezuela, you, yeah. They're they're, gonna... they're no, I know they're going to steal them. Like, you know, I, I know. And again, this is just a Venezuelan thing. I'm not saying, and I'm sure other people watching from other countries will be like, if I was in my country, I would do the same. No chance I'm going to notify anyone because they're going to steal I get, I get it. But, but Israel, I would, I would do the right thing. Because Israel, that's their whole country is based on finding artifacts and discovery and all yeah. of that. I mean, I would, I, would, I would have an inclination to do that anywhere. Yeah. If I was in Indonesia, or what, I would do that. Turning it in. Turning it in. Hopefully, or, I could keep it yeah. and maybe get credit for finding it. But if not, then you don't. Yeah, and if they don't leave the country, maybe donate them to a museum. Or just, you know, know that it's not going to be stolen and sold for money for like a politician or, or the, exactly. the thug of the town. Right, that would be Which awful. is exactly what's going to happen if this was Venezuela. Well, that's sad. <laughs> that's reality. Okay. It's believed that that may not be the only treasure there, but so far, it's the only one that's been found. Very cool. Number one. Underwater city, China. Wow. Many underwater expeditions in one way or another are to find the mythical lost city of Atlantis. And it seems like divers may have found it in China. In 1959, the government of China was implementing the Chinon Hydroelectric and River Dam project, which meant that they were going to flood an entire area to make a dam. Most of the people were relocated and the dam was made, but it wasn't until 2001 that a group of divers found an entire city submerged in the water. That city is called Shisheng, which translates to Lion City. It's an entire ancient city the size of 62 football fields, dating back to 200 AD. And the entire city remains in perfect condition. Even the wooden structures deep beneath the waters, even today. All right, comment below which of these ocean discoveries you found the most shocking. The aliens. All right, that's the end of the video. But, um, you know, with the whole thing of that city in China, like we have two lakes here in georgia th- that i know of mm-hmm. the half like towns yes. underwater yes. because they were flooded to make the lakes like lanier is one of them lake lanier lake alatuna which is nearby by the house uh, where i have my boat like this is normal like i when i get it that they finally found this town or whatever mm-hmm. and i get it that even though it's two from 200 a.d the condition is spectacular which means it's fresh water so it wasn't in the ocean but um I mean, the area was flooded. Like They knew there was a town down there somewhere. It's still cool. I mean, it's really neat. I would love to dive cool. that was stuff shocking? and see all this oh. stuff. Yeah. No, the shocking, shocking one was the alien. I mean, that, that, that structure. There's no aliens. That was... Nobody built those kind of things. Th- there's no so pictures I wonder if they, of it. when they, where they came from and what 
what metals there are in it. I'd like to learn more facts about that alien one. Yeah, it's just ancient so. humans that were super smart and built it. Metals from that are natural to Earth and probably stuff like that is on there. Oh, my God. Thinking. So that's pretty shocking. This is the worst. Um, all right. Well, everyone, thank you for watching this show. Don't forget to subscribe and tell us what you think about these, uh, these founts and how will you handle a situation where you found gold or something like that on the water, too. We love to engage on the comments. I yeah. think it's always funny when people are surprised. It's like, oh, my God, you responded to my comment. Yeah, we respond to comments. Yeah, it's great. Thank you for the comments. If actually. you ask us a question, you leave something smart down there, chances are we're going to respond. On most of them. Yeah, uh, for sure. But um, other than that, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.